What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to do another Mo Money, Mo Merch, Mo Problems kind of scenario. Uh, this time I'm calling it Symbiote Sightings. And uh, and that is also a nod to I Spy a Symbiote, who is on Instagram, who does amazing, amazing job covering a lot of things where you can find symbiotes out there, whether it's on a t-shirt or, you know, a toy that's coming out, a statue or a comic book appearance, whatever it is. I Spy a Symbiote covers everything. So a lot of this information I got here today is actually from their Instagram. And I, I did that on purpose. Once I saw a couple posts, I was like, you know what? I want to give them another shout out because I love what they do. And at the end of each week, they'll make like a little Daily Bugle type newspaper or the, or the Globe or whatever it is. And they, and they kind of recap all the information they've covered throughout the week. So if you just want to be up to date on all things Symbiote, please follow I Spy a Symbiote on Instagram. I love their account and I love shouting them out. And uh, today we're going to talk about some information, a lot of information that I got from their page and then other stuff that I saw elsewhere in other places and, and some I heard about other places um, or I heard before and I, they finally got announced. But most of this, uh, the images I'm getting here are from I Spy a Symbiote. So please go check them out. Their link is down below in the description box to their Instagram account. Follow them over there, please, please. They are awesome. So first we're going to start off with like toys slash Funkos. So first up, we got a Venom Funko Pop. It's exclusive to the Funko website and it's him holding a sword and Thor's hammer. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, that's going to be up for pre-order very, very soon, I believe, if not already. So make sure you keep an eye on the Funko page, uh, their main website, and to see when that goes up for pre-order or when you can buy it. And speaking of Funko Pops, there's also another one, Spider-Man 300, the cover recreated with Spider-Man in the black suit. And that's obviously the first full appearance of Venom and the first time he fights Spider-Man. So be sure to pick that up. I think that's a Target exclusive and it's out now, but it keeps selling out on the website. So probably have to, you know, scan the shelves every time you go to Target and see if you can find one over there. They'll probably, if it's not in the toy aisle, it's probably over where the video games are and they put the collectibles and stuff. So chance are it's going to be in that section if you have one of those at your Target. Next up is a little series of toys called the Marvel Stunt Squad. These have been out for a while, but now they're adding Venom to the mix. Uh, they're like little one inch figures that come with little launchers and you can launch them at each other and stuff and little play sets sometimes. So they have one coming out with Spider-Man versus Venom and it's got Venom like kind of on a symbiote throne. And then there's going to be another like a uh, multi-pack that has Spider-Man and Miles Morales uh, versus Venom. And Venom comes with like a, a giant chest piece of Venom with like tentacles coming out of it and stuff. So it's basically him going into super mode or something. So that's going to be pretty cool. They look really neat. And for those of you who collect or have young kids who, are, you know, you want to get them into Marvel comics and Venom stuff, uh, this is be something, you know, that you can pick up for them so they can play with and you can play with them because they have, like I said, these little launchers that shoot the characters out of each other. So you can kind of make it a fun game out of it. Um, but yeah, it's it looks really neat. They're just cool. Spider-Man's got a, like a slightly different costume in the set with him and Miles where he's got like a white and black costume. So uh, these, they just look cool. I just like the designs of them. They're kind of cute. And even if you just collect them and have little things on your shelves or at your desk, these would be perfect for that. And the last two things I want to talk about in this category is going to be this little Supa Rama figure. It's like a little Venom and he's standing, he's like jumping all over the city and there's like a little cityscape behind him. That's really cool. They've been making these for a while too and they've done some stuff on this scale with like the Venomized characters of Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and other stuff back when they did the Maximum Venom cartoon and they had that like branding on all the toys. So this is really cool, just having one of these little diorama things with the city and Venom. Again, cool desk item, uh, but something for the shelf, like if you're a collector, they're going to release a Spider-Man the Animated Series Venom statue bust, which is really, really neat because they actually painted it and colored it the way he looked in the series with the red and blue lights like uh, shimmering off him and stuff uh, of the city. So that's really cool. They did a really good job. I have the images hopefully popping up on there and uh, it's really neat. It just looks really cool and I love that they put in the red and blue just to give it that kind of pop and give it that lighting style from that animated series which is you know arguably one of the best versions of Venom's origin. It's so good that it kind of became canon when other shows or other movies and stuff couldn't fit in the Secret Wars story this is kind of what a lot of people go to where it just came from a ship from outer space with John Jameson and it ended up on Earth uh, with, you know, Peter Parker and, and Eddie Brock. So very, very cool. I love this statue bust. And if I'm able to, I'll probably get one just to have it because it'll go really good with all the statues I have back there, which my big bean head is covering up right now. <laughs> but yeah, it would look really cool on your shelf, too. So make sure you pick one up when it comes out. Okay, before we get to the comics, I do want to talk about a few other little things that I saw on I Spy a Symbiote's page. These I did not know were coming out. I had no idea this was going to happen. Uh, there's a little sticker book that's coming out called Marvel Versus, and it's going to be, I think, a Walmart exclusive, and I'll put some images up. They're pretty cool. It's like little booklets. You get uh, packets of stickers, 
and you can put your stickers into the booklet to help tell the story of these two page spreads where they have characters fighting each other. And there is going to be a Spider-Man, Venom, and Carnage page where you can get stickers and add them to that album. So that's really cool. So if you're out there and you're a sticker collector or you just want something fun to pick up, because I like buying trading cards and I would love for a Spider-Man, Venom, Carnage, you know, symbiote series of trading cards to come out where it's just because there's so many symbiotes and so many spider people now, it'd be a really cool uh, expanded set of just those characters. That'd be a fun trading card set. So it's, until we get something like that, this will be really cool to have like a little sticker collection. So be sure to pick this up. It's going to be at Walmart. And if you play mobile games, um, Marvel Snap is this really cool card trading game where you battle with cards uh, that you can play online. You get free cards for signing in. You know, they give you some stuff like that. But obviously there's microtransactions like any mobile game where, you know, you try to buy more cards to get characters you like and, you know, of the ones that are available. And I did play this for a couple, like maybe two or three days when it first launched. But uh, it's not really my style of, of, you know, gameplay, but it was really cool. I think the people who made it did a really good job. And I love the animated trailer they put out for it with Venom and all these other characters like fighting side by side. It's really, really awesome. And so for those of you out there who are still playing it or haven't played it yet and want to get into it, they are adding Null to the game. Uh, so you can get Null now and this cool little art form that they shared off. Uh, one of the artists, Dan Hip, is the artist of this uh, drawing. And he's doing, you know, he's done a lot of stuff for Marvel Snap and in this really cool, unique style. So big shout out to him and big shout out to those of you out there who like Null and want to play him, you know, play as him in a card game. It's really fun. I, I recommend it, even though I'm not still playing it. But again, I'm kind of an older guy and card games aren't always my thing. I like collecting trading cards and that's kind of what appealed to me about this game. But then once I was like, ah, if it was just like a trading card app where I could collect stuff, that might be something different. I might get a little more involved, but just have, making time to play it every day, I just never did. So, uh, but I still enjoyed it for the first couple of days I played it. And I recommend those of you out there who like mobile games and who like playing, you know, card games on it, pick up Marvel Snap, especially if you're a Marvel fan, it's a lot of fun. And last, before we get into the comic books, let's talk about things you can put comic books in, like this box that's coming out for Carnage Reigns. Uh, this is really cool. This is going to be released at retail stores, you know, anywhere you can buy comic books. But if you want one of these, you should go into your local comic store and ask them to order them. Uh, they're going to have to order them in bundles of, I think, five or ten. So hopefully other people request it too, because they might not get you one. You know, they might not order a bundle just to get you one of them. So, uh, so it depends on what kind of store you go to. They might ask you to pay for the whole bundle, in which case you'll get, you know, five or ten of these boxes. Uh, but, uh, but they are really cool. So, you know, if, you're, if your local store ends up carrying them, or you can go ask them if they're planning on getting them. And if so, if they could hold you one, that will probably entice them to order a bundle if they know people out there want them. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And this way you can store all your Venom and Carnage books that come out this year and all your symbiote books because there's going to be a ton. And we're going to get into that right now. <laughs> So with comic books, we'll start with the digital stuff. Uh, so we have a Alligator Loki book that's coming out on the Marvel Unlimited app, and this will have an issue that will feature Venom and Carnage, or at least they're on the cover of it, uh, holding a little Alligator Loki. So for those of you who probably want something kind of fun and goofy version of these characters, you might get that, or at least in like a fun-spirited book. Uh, so there's that that's going to be coming out. Uh, but then there's also in the Spider-Verse Unlimited book that is available on the Comixology app, there's a couple of announcements we got. Uh, first of all, there was one that came out recently that had Madam Web having a vision. And in her visions, she actually foresaw the uh, return of Red Goblin in Normie Osborn. So there's like a panel that gives that away. And also she revealed a symbiote bonded with Thanos in the Avengers book, which is the ending or nearing the end of uh, the run that's been going on for many years now, uh, for me for way too long, because I haven't really liked Jason Aaron's run. But in that book, it's finally coming into an end uh, with uh, Jason Aaron leaving the book soon. And it has this big battle and there's a Thanos with a, a symbiote on him. So there's that and she has a vision of that. So there's also the Avengers book you can go pick up that has a symbiote in it. There was a Black Panther book for a while that had a symbiote in it. And we'll do a whole episode on that coming up at some point soon. Um, but yeah, so this digital book kind of gives you a little hint at some of the other symbiotes that we're seeing now and seeing soon in Avengers. But there's also another Spider-Man Unlimited series where, or same series, but in a different issue, where we're going to get Hobie Brown back as Spider-Punk, and he's back in his world, and he's going to fight his version of Carnage. Uh, so that is really cool, because in the main book, like when he first appeared, Venom, they were the cops, you know? Like all the cops were the, the VPD or whatever, the Venom Police Department. So I'm kind of curious to see what version of Carnage we're going to get, because in the image here, it looks like that Hobie himself 
becomes kind of a carnage and he's like rocking out on stage with the teeth and everything. So I'm kind of curious is that, you know, if the Venom are the orderly police, you know, in, in a sense, even though they were still the bad guys, what is carnage? Is he's, I guess he's anarchy and stuff and he's the rebellion in a way um, against the police and that could fit with Hobie, but do they really have the same mindset? You know, is carnage a, really a good guy in this universe? We'll have to see. So I thought that was really cool that they're going to do Carnage in the Hobie Brown Spider-Punk universe because I like what they did with the, the police stuff with Venom in the, his original story. And speaking of Carnage, obviously Carnage is going to appear in Spider-Man 2099, the new Dark Genesis book that's going to be coming out. So be sure to pick that up. And then obviously he'll take over with the crossover event this summer during Summer Symbiotes where he does Carnage Reigns. And it'll be going into the Carnage book and the Miles Morales book. Um, so be sure to pick that up and a Red Goblin book as well. So we will cover that story as it releases or soon after it releases, depending if I catch up or not. Uh, but yeah, we will definitely cover that story when it drops. But be sure to pick it up and read it for yourself so that you're ready for the comment section when those videos drop. But as we all know, Carnage and Venom aren't the only symbiotes out there. There are others for sure. Much like spider people, there's just one that pops up every day, it seems like nowadays. And so we haven't really followed the adventures of Flash Thompson in the uh, pages of Savage Avengers in that book, um, but we will. I'm gonna do another uh, two-part episode, I think, where I break down every issue that's come out so far so that we're fully caught up on Flash Thompson and where he is. So obviously pick up Savage Avengers if you're a Flash Thompson fan, because he's still over there as the character Anti-Venom. And if you're a Deadpool fan, which, you know, we've talked about that character a ton on this show because they try to retcon in a certain way that he was the first human host of the symbiote before Peter Parker at one point. Um, and that does continuity still exist in Deadpool's head, but whether it's true continuity or not, yeah, you know, you could argue it either way. Um, but Deadpool thinks that happened. So now after everything that he's been through, He's grown some new arms, actually. He's got extra arms coming out of his back as of a recent uh, run of his that they just recently relaunched. Uh, so he's back to Deadpool number one. But over the course of the issues, he's dealing with these new arms that may be tied to Carnage. And there's a lot going on there that they're revealing over the course of that book. So we'll dive into Deadpool at some point now that he's involved. I had no idea who's going to be involved in this uh, until someone told me, I think it was Eddie's mullet told me, uh, read Deadpool number one and check it out. And I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And I saw it. I was like, okay, this could be fun. This could be fun to cover. So Deadpool, if you want, you know, more uh, symbiote stuff you could see Deadpool dealing with some extra arms and what that might entail and how that might lead into a, an event at some point or him you know being part of an event at some point we'll see uh, but then also this was cool because I Spy Symbiote posted this where it was a variant cover for a Warlock Rebirth book I think that's coming out and on the cover they put the Guardians of the Galaxy but they put the version where Venom Space Knight was part of the team uh, so you actually see Venom Space Knight underneath Rocket there Oh, that was cool. I was like, hey, that's just neat to see that version of him again. We haven't seen that in a couple years, so that's very cool. We have a new Cult of Carnage book, Misery, uh, coming out. And I think this is either a one-shot or it might be a mini-series. But Liz Allen, um, mother of Normie Osborn, you know, childhood for a high school friend of Peter Parker's, and you know, she's been around forever. Um, she also helped out with the anti-venom stuff with Eddie Brock and you know, Flash Thompson and other things, uh, working at Alchemex. She apparently is going to get her own symbiote now. And I'm like, well, I guess it makes sense. She's surrounded by them. She has Normie walking around. You know, Venom checked in on her from time to time. Anti-Venom was part of that. Uh, she's at Alchemex. So she's going to be Misery. This is a new symbiote that they're creating for her. Much like Red Goblin has a sliver of carnage in his book called Rascal, which we will talk about in the next episode. Uh, but in Misery here, I don't know much more than it's apparently it's Liz Allen. It's a new female symbiote. And what her story is and what they're going to discuss. I have no idea. I actually don't even think I know the creative team on this. I just know that Lionel, you did one of the variant covers um, and that Scan did one of the other ones. So that's pretty much all I know about this book so far. Uh, but I'll try to do some more research. And when the book comes out, we'll have a fun time, you know, dissecting it and talking about it. Um, and then speaking of other symbiotes out there, uh, the T-Rex Spider-Man uh, has a symbiote. There was obviously the T-Rex Spider-Man, and then there was the T-Rex in the Old Man Logan universe that had a symbiote attached to it that escaped from the Savage Land and ran across the desert with a symbiote on it. So um, we will get into the Old Man universe because I like that uh, in Old Man Hawkeye, they brought that symbiote back and they did it really, really well uh, with Hawkeye trying to fight a Venom symbiote or an army of them kind of when they bonded to multiple man. So uh, so talk, talking about the T-Rex and stuff, we'll get into, but this is a cover for a new Edge of Spider-Verse book because obviously they're going to try to 
get all these things out there now uh, because they're going to be wrapping up. The Dan Slott wants to wrap up the Spider-Verse um, and, and same with Venom-Verse like that. Marvel wants to wrap that up. So expect a lot of things to just start pumping out <laughs> this summer, which we're already getting a ton of. I mean, this video is going to run pretty long and longer than most other videos we've done like this in the past because there's just so much. Um, in fact, this is something I, I had no idea either. So again, shout out to I Spy a Symbiote. Because in the Daredevil book, obviously, Agony can be featured uh, in the Thunderbolts team, and she shows up a lot in the current Daredevil book. Uh, but so please pick that up if you're looking for more symbiote stuff. Pick up uh, the appearances Agony has been in in those issues. Um, but also there's a Daredevil Echo book coming out. Uh, and in this book, they're actually picking up the threads of a story that got left behind. Um, if you remember the Scream book that came out, they were dealing with a new Demogoblin and her kidnapping children. And they kind of wrapped it up really quickly in a one shot during the big, you know, uh, King and Black storyline. But we haven't really got more on it since then. And we don't know what happened to Demogoblin after. So apparently this Daredevil Echo series is going to dive into that. It's a four issue series and it's going to pick up on those threads. So I'd be really interested to see if Scream shows up in this if they try to wrap that story up. And I don't know if it's the same writer that did the original Scream book or if it's a new team. But I'm intrigued. So those of you out there who want to see how that Scream story ended, maybe this is our chance to finally get some closure to that story. We got a little bit of closure in the uh, King and Black book, but maybe this is a way to, to fully wrap it up. And if so, that's pretty awesome. We also have event books coming out and some other titles coming out that have symbiotes in them. Uh, Contest of Chaos is a new Marvel event that they're going to do this summer uh, in the middle of summer of symbiotes in the middle of an X-Men event and the Avengers wrapping up like of course, Marvel just does that where they just flood the market with stuff. And it's it's a lot of it's not quality, in my opinion. And uh, and so I don't know how much of this I'll actually dive into. I'll probably wait till it comes out fully by the trade when it goes on sale on Comixology and talk about it then. Because uh, apparently this is a story where all the characters in the Marvel Universe fight their inner demons. Uh, and actually, it's funny because DC has a story coming out this year in the summer where it's everyone fighting their worst nightmares. <laughs> so it's just... Okay, whatever. And on the cover, I was like, well, a contest of chaos. Like, that was a cool catchphrase from the Moon Knight show, which was like, embrace your chaos. Um, so why wasn't Moon Knight on the front cover here? And uh, he is. He's in the cover. He's just way in the back. But I'm like, ah, I feel like he would be nearer to the front for people who have inner demons. Uh, it'd be fun to see him kind of, you know, uh, be close to the front. But you have Venom on the cover punching uh, Deadpool. And it's Venom with the red symbiote on him. So it's obviously Dylan. So I don't know. We'll see where that goes and, and if I'm interested. And there's also going to be another event book called uh, Ultimate Invasion, which is uh, I think it's more of like a mini series type thing. But Jonathan Hickman and Brian Hitch are going to be doing it. And it's the Ultimate Universe invading the Marvel Universe in some way. And the maker is at the center of the storyline. So that is what I'm interested in. Uh, I thought he was going to be part of the Summer of Symbiotes and he may still have something symbiote related in his story. But this seems to be the story where he's going to be coming back to the Marvel Universe in a big way. And there's going to be a big um, story to you know go around, wrap around it and stuff. So I like that character a lot. It was one of my favorite parts of Donnie Cates' run. So I'll probably check out Ultimate um, Invasion. And if it's something where symbiotes are mentioned, I'll talk about it on this show. Or maybe I'll just do a wrap-up finale to The Maker because I liked following his adventure when we were talking about him during Donny Cates' stuff. And then out of continuity stuff, there's the Double Trouble series. I still haven't fully reviewed the first Venom in Spider-Man Double Trouble, but now there's a Spider-Man Miles Morales Double Trouble coming out and Venom will appear in it. So maybe when that series is done too, I'll do like a double whammy and do a double review of Double Trouble. <laughs> and then Moon Knight, speaking of Moon Knight, uh, I love that character. Obviously I've, I've grown to love that character a lot more uh, for obvious reasons now with my, my diagnosis and stuff. So it was really cool to see that we're gonna get Dylan and Venom teaming up with Moon Knight coming up. Uh, and in Moon Knight, in the Moon Knight series, which I've been loving. I think Jed McKay is doing an amazing job on this book. I highly recommend people buy it. Uh, you know, I always talk, I'm very critical of a lot of comics that come out right now. And although I have some criticisms of the Moon Knight comic, overall, I, I enjoy it. I actually really am locked into this story where Moon Knight is protecting a section of New York. And he's uh, has kind of like a, not really a cult, but he's like hanging out with like a vampire and they're like working together and he has a therapist and and he's like watching over this area of town where, it, you know, the most crime and muggings have been happening lately. And he's trying to protect all the travelers of the night. And it's neat. It really is. And so to bring Venom into that, I'm I'm very excited. So there's going to be a story, you know, that might run an issue or two where they meet up in that book. So that's going to be fun. And obviously, if you want more Venom stuff in the you know multiverse, 
there's going to be extreme Venomverse coming out and Death of Venomverse, which we already made an episode on. So, you know, be sure to check out those books when they drop as well. And lastly, we have another Lethal Protector miniseries. They're trying to call this Lethal Protector 2, even though it's technically the fourth series that's going by the name Lethal Protector. Although one of the series was not its own miniseries. It was in the monthly Venom book. Uh, so it just gets, uh, it, by Mike Costa, it just gets really confusing. Um, I wish they would just do like Venom Lethal Protector is the first one. And then Venom Lethal Protector Blood in the Water, I think is what they renamed the second one when they put it in trade paperback form. And then if I'm not mistaken, the one they did last year where it was just Venom Lethal Protector again, I think they gave that a colon in another title when they put that in trade form. So it just, I just wish they would do that from the beginning uh, and just be like, okay, this is the Lethal Protector saga um, or whatever. <laughs> but David Michelini's coming back to write it. So I'm not super excited because, you know, I didn't really like the first one. I thought it was like, I thought it was, if it was just mindless fun, I would have got into it. But there was just so many things that kept pulling me out of the story continuity wise and dialogue wise. And just, I'm like, dude, this actually isn't, isn't good in my opinion. I really didn't like it. And even the art was just like some pages was good, some pages it wasn't. So it felt like a very inconsistent book considering the talent that was on it. So I'm not very interested in this. And I'm, my favorite villain in all of comics is Dr. Doom. And this is a story where apparently Venom gets, you know, caught up in a story where it pits him against Doctor Doom, or at least puts them in the same room together multiple times. Whether they're enemies or not, we'll find out. But I, it's like, I love Doctor Doom, and I think Michelini could write a good Doctor Doom, but I really hope this st series has more focus. I really hope the art is more consistent, and I really hope they deliver a story that just feels like it's it's refreshing to get, you know? Because there's a lot of current Venom books with so much continuity and time travel and all these elements in it that you're just like, okay, this is like the the big epic Venom book that they have out there. Having these Lethal Protectors, something that goes back to basics, is good. I think that's that's why I had so much fun reading that Marvel Unlimited, you know, Venom vs. Carnage book recently on the digital app because it was just like a mindless fun throwback to the 90s book. And that's, and that's what I want from these, but I didn't feel like I got that with the first Lethal Protector, so... I really hope we get it with this one. Uh, but if you agree with any of the comments I said today about any of these books, are you excited for some of them? Are you not excited for others? Are you going to get some of the toys? Are you not? Like, whatever it is, whatever we talked about today, let me know down below uh, what you think of all this stuff. There's so much. There's so much coming out. And I knew this was going to take a long time, this video. So I'll try to edit it down and get it as succinct as I can. Um, but uh, but with me still, I'm, I'm finally getting over being sick. I took a couple days off. Like, I started feeling this the thing in my throat. And then I stopped recording for a few days. And then now I'm back to it today. And I'm like, okay, I'm feeling better. I got some energy uh, but now I can feel like I'm I'm using up all that energy, so uh, I made a very long video. But I will record a Red Goblin review and get that up to you the day after this goes up. So uh, yeah, so let me know down below what you think of all this. If there's some things I missed too that are out there that are coming out, please let me know. There's a cool Venom versus Spider-Man shirt I saw at uh, Disney Springs that I put in my Symbiote short that came out recently where I bought a Miles Morales shirt. So if you want to see what that looks like, you can check out my shorts. And I'll try to come up with some more short ideas soon with some toy reviews from the Spider-Verse movie toys. Um, I have a bunch of them back there on the shelf, and I want to do like quick one-minute uh, reviews of them. So you'll see more shorts coming up in the next couple weeks. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think of all this, and we'll keep talking in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching the show as always, and I Spy a Symbiote, thank you for your invaluable efforts you know like you put a lot of work into your instagram account and i am so grateful it made me you know getting images for this episode much easier for me um but also what you do and doing those like you know newspaper articles and just spreading the positivity of symbiotes and stuff you like you are i rarely see you ever be negative and i love that about your your account so everyone out there please go follow i spy a symbiote i'll put a link again down below so you can check out their page and thank you again my friend whoever you are out there and thank you all for watching see you in the future peace